acceptable, Mr. Damodar? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. I can hear you. Okay. okay. Uh, we have uh, for one more minute. Uh, okay, 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 no problem. We'll admit all the participants. Okay. So once of the uh, settlement is done, they will immediately start. Okay, 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 no problem. Good afternoon. My name is Harshita Gorn, and I will be here to help facilitate the discussion and ensure that everything runs smoothly. So I would like to welcome our speaker, Dr. Ashok Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of Pharmaceutical Technology, UCSI University, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And I would like to welcome you all to this webinar titled Smart Multifunctional Nanoparticles in Cancer Thinostics Progress and Perspective. So before we begin, I would like to go over a few things. First, please make sure that your microphones are muted throughout the webinar so that we can avoid any background noises. And second is that So with that, I would like to invite Ms. Vaishnavi Patel to give a brief introduction of our speaker. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests and participants from around the world. I am delighted to stand before you today as we gather in this virtual space for a momentous occasion, the smart multifunctional nanoparticles in cancer therano theranostic progress and perspectives. Myself, Vaishnavi Patel, I'm a student in MPharm first semester, Department of Pharmacology, Faculty of Pharmacy. Today, we have an honor of welcoming dedicated their life to the pursuit of knowledge. Dr. Ashok Kumar Janki Raman is an assistant professor in the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences at a U UCSI University, Malaysia. Asok received the MPharm Pharmaceutics and PhD degree from the Sastra and Prist University, Thanjavur, India in 2008 and 2014 respectively. His research is situated in the field of pharmaceutical technology and product development with a special focus on nanotechnology for drug solubility enhancement, fast melting tablets, topical products and collaborative R&D in industries such as pharmaceuticals and cosmeceuticals. He is an author or co-author He has received several important recognitions 
for his research career including the asian youth innovation award silver medal in the malaysia technology expo 2020 he currently serves as the technical advisor academic for geomatica university a fellow of the einstein research academy and an associate member of malaysia pharmaceutical society he secured a three university internal grant worth malaysian ringgit 124000 in 2022 from the ministry of sa faculty research scholarly activity today we have privilege of welcoming dr ashok kumar to our gathering their insightful and thought provoking a presentation promises to broaden our horizons challenge our perspective and ignite our imagination as we prepare to embark on this intellectual journey let us open our hearts and minds to the wisdom and inspiration that our distinguished speaker is about to share with us please join me in the in giving a warm round of applause as we welcome dr ashok kumar to the session thank you very much thank you ma'am i appreciate the introduction it's a great uh, to speaking with you all today on the topic of uh, smart multifunctional nanoparticle in carrier diagnostic progress and perspective uh, i would like to thank the management of uh, ramaya university of applied sciences and the uh, convener for the today's international webinar dr j anbu professor and head and the faculty coordinator dr muhammad sabi and mr uh, damodar noyer topic at least to share my uh, view on this topic so maybe it will be beneficial for the students club and they can uh, they can learn more things about the current uh, multifunctional nanoparticles in the te cancer diagnostic so sh shall we share my slide here sir my my voice is audible right yes sir you are audible but okay. uh, we can't see your presentation okay okay just uh, just a moment i can share my slides I hope now you can see my yes, slides. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. We are good to go. Okay. So today uh, we are going to talk about the smart multifunctional nanoparticle in the cancer diagnostic. What is the current progress and perspective on it? cancer worldwide and also what is the therapies and their limitation with the current treatment and overview of the multifunctional nanoparticles strategies of the nano diagnostic uh, so now the new term came up with the uh, multifunctional nanoparticles is a nano diagnostic so if the diagnosis and treatment with the nanoparticle we can call it as a nano diagnostic and what are the advantages offered by the nanoparticle in the cancer diagnostic and how to choose that means what type of nanoparticle is there which one is nano diagnostic and what are the examples of the nano diagnostic and what are the challenges we are facing and whether it's suitable to implicable that means to you know implement in the market whether it can be converted to the bench scale to the lab uh, that means in the large scale 
and what are the issues or challenges we are facing. Maybe we are going to cover in this topic today. Um, so firstly, we can start with the prevalence of cancer worldwide. If I'm not mistaken, uh, maybe you can know about uh, cancer. Uh, it's uh, one of the leading cause of death worldwide. So recently, the global cancer statistics. Huh? You know, very few types of cancers, like for example, lungs cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, liver cancers. So, but we have 25 types of cancer worldwide. It's in 185 countries. So they took the statistics from uh, 183 countries in that this is the first and second leading cause of death you know, before the age of 70 years in out of 183 countries, 112 countries, the first and second leading cause of death. So in an average, this is considered as a third leading cause of death worldwide. But out of 183, is the third and fourth uh, leading cause of death. So if you imagine that uh, if it is the bar diagram mentioned here, so currently we are in 2020 range. Uh, so in this uh, 90 million new cases, so every year we are facing the 9 million deaths, deaths for, from the cancer. So if you imagine that if you increase uh, like in the same way, same manner, so in 2040, the new cases is around 30.2 million and the deaths maybe we expect 16.3 million per year. So we are very from uh, here. It's ours is not like the others uh, kind of cancers. Ours is more focused on the lip and oral cavity cancers. So this is actually is a high frequency in the Central Asia, especially in the India. So here the incidence is around 10.4 million uh, male and 10.4 million females incidence is passing to have a men and women respectively. So we are uh, actually we are not in the uh, top with the other cancer type. We prone to the oral cavity cancers as compared to other countries. So we are in the need to make a good clinical application for such kind of cancer uh, to prevent at least uh, to treat. What is the current cancer therapies and their limitation? As a student, you know, right? Uh, what is the current therapy we are using? So we have to cause a race. So there is a radiation kind of therapies and chemotherapy. Other than that, we will have a intervention or the first line therapies with the surgical treatment. So mainly we have three top treatments for the cancers, radiation, chemotherapy and surgicals, uh, surgical treatment. So this is considered as a first line therapy for our cancer. It's like mentioned here is unable to achieve a cancer of free status and low tumor selectivity. We cannot going to select the exact place to treat and multiple multi-drug resistance cells. This is a recent trend. If you plan to treat any cancer cells, they, they are already with the resist with some of the drugs. So even though if you treat or if you target the cell, we cannot get the exact, uh, you know, uh, pharmacological response on the cell. The drug may produce a toxicity to the normal cells. 
un undesirable ad adverse effect of the drug. So these are all the limitations we are facing currently. So we need a prompt diagnosis. It's not carried out uh, the probability of treatment failure. So tumor recurrence and metastasis also increasing. So we need to do the proper diagnosis first before going to treat. So we need a prompt diagnosis before going to treat uh, any cancer type. So what we have with the conventional nanoparticles is leads to change in the biodistribution pattern as it is mainly delivered to the reticuloendothelial system. What we have with the current nanoparticles is actually when, once it's injected into the bloodstream, it's mainly delivered to the reticuloendothelial system. What is the role of reticuloendothelial system? Through oral route, it can be eliminated through uh, either spleen, liver, or lungs. Through the organ, through the endo reticuloendothelial system, and also it's having the very short. Uh, circulation time is maybe three to five minutes after the IV administration. So we cannot get the, uh, you know, extended action or the required pharmacological response. Then the penetration of such a carrier system is across the tumor endothelium. It would be a The, the carrier system across the tumor endothelium would be minimal, so cannot have a penetration into the uh, tumor cells. So what would, what would we need here? So we need a effective personalized treatment plans. It's incorporating the cancer diagnosis and therapeutics approach. intelligent strategy is based on the nanoparticle dis design which would provide the effective treatment to the cancers so previously before uh, the nanoparticle system they come up with the monoclonal antibodies uh, therapy to treat the cancer even though it's having their own uh, you know advantages and disadvantages to address this issue they came up with the new uh, you know new method and techniques to prepare the nanoparticles. In a variety of way, while you carrying the medicine on the uh, therapy, for example, we need to modify something in the existing uh, nanoparticles. So you look at the diagram here. You look at the diagram here, we can have uh, uh, nanoparticles is attached with the different antennas like structures. What we enhance the bio distribution pattern of our drug. Then the next one, the red color, we can call it as that is a targeting moiety. So that can be easily attached with the uh, you know, uh, the receptors to deliver the drug. Then this arrow marks indicate that this is the core, the core of a nanoparticles. This is considered as a bioactive. Uh, maybe we can modify the loading capacity and also the release pattern of drug from the nanoparticles. consider as an imaging agent. Huh? So suppose if you are administered any of the drug, then it reaches the organ or uh, affected area. We should know whether the particular medication will reach us the target site. So how to identify by using the imaging uh, agent? So we can have a lot of imaging agent. For example, the CY5 also is an imaging agent. For example, if you are administered through the animals, then 
it will be you know detected in a particular organ so we can confirm nanoparticle whether it is used to increase the bio distribution or to target the exact organ and maybe we can modify the drug release pattern and also we can do the imaging huh? so to identify whether it reaches the uh, target place or not so uh, in brief we can say that it may be used for imaging drug release and also the targeting so targeting maybe here is the cancer cells. So if you have any folate in your uh, nanoparticle, multifunctional nanoparticle, it will go and attach with the receptor. Okay. So uh, if it is a cancer cell is there, so it's prone to attract the folate receptor. So our drug will go and attach with that place and deliver the drug. So now we talk about the uh, nano Theranostic, huh? right? What is mean by theranostic? This is the word. Concussor is identify or uh, you know invent this word you know, theranostic. What is mean by theranostic? Just now we saw in the previous slide we have a imaging drug and targeting so these three things in a one uh, compound or in a one particle we can call it as theranostic okay so nano medicine so this three things should be there in the one device so that is called as a theranostic So normally we can have the moieties like uh, folate, polyethylene glycohol, hyaluronic acid, or any uh, optimers or any antibiotics. Uh, we can make it in the nanoparticle that may increase the period of drug into the target site, or it may be you know uh, focus on the specific. Penetration and accumulation in the human tissue. So, what is the role of imaging agents? Normally, we can have a lot of imaging agents. So, by using the magnetic resonance imaging, we can identify whether the compound have reached the target site. So, how we are going to achieve this imaging strategy by using the smart multifunctional nanoparticle. So it should be considered as a personalized and precise treatment to the a delivery diagnosis as well as a therapeutic medicine in a one device. So let's say here the nano, what is the role of nano here? It's a nano therapeutics is uh, proved very promising in cancer treatment, especially in cancer. So nanotechnology is a, a, a uh, one to hundred nanometer, we can call it as a nano scale. Uh, and the added advantages, we, if you go with the nano thermostic, we can have a high loading capacity due to the high uh, external surface. Okay, if the particle size reduced, we have a lot of surface, right? So uh, it can be have a high uh, drug loading and it's having the small size comparable with the surface of biological system. So it's actively interact with the cellular compound. So that's why we prefer theranostic with the nanoparticle. So it's We have uh, two different uh, strategies or techniques uh, used to synthesize the nanomaterials. The first one is a uh, uh, bottom up techniques. So maybe from the picture itself, you can understand that we have atom 
ion and molecules all together then we can form as a particle but it should be in that nano range so this is a uh, constructive approach all together we form a cluster so this is a constructive approach to make it as a nano scale structure so we can have a nano particles this is bottom up techniques we have a lot of examples is there in the bottom up techniques like you know biosynthesis chemical vapor deposition salt to gel transformation so we have a lot of example for bottom up techniques then another one is a top down techniques top down techniques is nothing but breakdown of a large particle converted into the small fragments. So that is called as a top-down uh, synthesis method. So forget we have two techniques. One is some um, bottom-up techniques. Another one is a top-down techniques. So what are the advantages of nanoparticles in the can uh, cancer theranostic? It's having just now also we discussed it's having the high drug loading capacity. It's versatile and customizable surface functional. Maybe in the upcoming slide, uh, we are going to explain on the uh, EPR uh, mechanism. It's mainly for the drug targeting. Then uh, you should have a site specific co delivered of drug and diagnostic tools to the tumor site. So we can call it as this is diagnostic, right? So diagnostic and treatment with a single platform. Then it's having the multifunctional. So we can have delivery, targeting, and imaging. Then it should it should be a biocompatible. So normally nowadays having the uh, synthetic particles, it should be a biocompatible, and it should have a So we have three different types of nanoparticles. So the firstly, we can call it as there is a organic nanoparticles. So we can classify this nanoparticles based on their, uh, you know, physical and chemical. It's actually is uh, synthesized and utilized the synthetic or the natural organic molecules. So like uh, lipos. If you talk about the advantages for the or, uh, organic nanoparticle, it's actually high, stable, and biodegradable, non-toxic, easy for the preparation. The method of preparation is very easy. Then the other side, we have inorganic nanoparticles. This is inorganic means uh, we have a metal and metal oxide nanoparticle. This analysis comes under the non-organic uh, nanoparticles. Then we have a hybrid. So in that hybrid nanoparticle, we can have lipid polymers, organic, inorganic mixed together. Then we will prepare as a nanoparticle. Then we have a carbon-based nanoparticles. This is actually the carbon-based nanoparticles are, uh, you know, it's a unique uh, characterization, uh, unique physiochemical properties. It inert in nature. Uh, it gets dissolved in our body itself. So we have uh, three different types of nanoparticle. We can classify them based on the physical chemical properties. Okay, once we prepare the particles, how the nanoparticle will target the cancer cells. So this is actually, we have uh, two mechanisms. Two mechanisms. 
one is this is actually is a nanoparticles the prepared nanoparticles it's act on the we have two types of targeting one is a active cellular targeting another one is a passive tissue targeting what is the difference between active and the passive so the passive means once it get affected meaning that if the tumor was formed the tumor tissue is highly disorganized vascular uh, articulature its irregular blood flow and reduced limit uh, lymphatic drainage and the vessels are leaky in nature meaning that it's totally disturbed due to the reaction of uh, you know uh, due to the uh, cell death we can say that the tumor tissue is highly disorganized so due to this disorganized nature you know the nano carriers is not removed effectively from the place and also it get attached into the tumor tissue through the epr effect what is mean by epr is enhanced permeation and retention factor or retention effect so due to this enhanced per because already the cancer cell area got damaged right? it's in the disorganized way so it may produce a targeting onto the cancer cell this is a passive targeting then the second one uh, this is a passive then the second one is an active cellular targeting so this is actually is uh, is we can call it as this is uh, specifically you know the specific targeting here the drug conjugate by causing the targeting protein so we can say this is a prepared nanoparticles it's having the functional thing for example maybe this is like a folate molecule so we have a receptor here so through this receptor so you look at this area so through this receptor the molecules can enter into the cell so this cell is considered as a damaged cell or you know uh, uh, or diseased cell so the fabricated nanoparticle enters the cells via the different endocytosis pathway so when it enter this is through the endocytosis pathway then it reaches the cytoplasm then it will you know kill part the nanomaterial will react through endocytosis process then passive means through the disorganized vascular architecture the drug get bind so you should differentiate this two different targeting technique when we administer or when we uh, you know consume the nanoparticle as a medication for cancer treatment either by active or uh, passive targeting so what is the mechanism action behind that huh? so when just now I, also i told you through the active targeting so we have the nano materials with drug so this mention as a drug okay then we have uh, different targeting moieties and imaging agents attached with the nano platform or the nano device then it's engulfing into the uh cell through endocytosis process then it reaches the endosome once the drug reaches the endosome the drug will be released inside the damaged cell so if the drug release was happened inside the cell then it promote the cell death okay through the fabrication of nanoparticles so this may be a cancer cell here so by this way normally the drug will target especially for the 
multifunctional nanoparticle will target the cancer cells. Now move to the progress of nano theranostic. So we already discussed what are the classic first line therapy for the current cancer treatment. Okay, normally chemotherapy. Then uh, chemotherapy means we can give the medication or any medicine which kills the cancer cell. That is called as a chemotherapy. Radiotherapy, we will give, uh, we will pass the radiation with the high dose to kill the cancer cells. Then the another one, do you remember? What is the another first line therapy? I think in second or third slide, we discussed on that first line therapy. What is the another one? It's a surgical uh, surgery. Do the surgery. That also yeah, another way uh, as a first line. Nano theranostic procedures to diagnostic and treat the cancers. So hemotheranostic, so this is a hemotherapy drugs and also we can have a diagnostic agent. Then the second one is a radiotheranostic. Uh, radiotheranostic, just now I told you, so we can pass the radiation. Huh? So the radiation with the high dose is considered as a uh, radiotherapy. If it is used in the low dose, huh? then it's maybe used for a X-ray, like you know, if you want to take for teeth or if any broken bone, we can use it the uh, radiography, right? So radio, that that case, they can use a smaller amount. Then uh, the third one is a phytodynamic theranostic. So we can use here is a thermal source or fluorescence imaging also. So it may be converted oxygen to the ROS, reactive oxygen subset. That may be very useful to kill the cancer cells. Huh? Once the oxygen converted to ROS, reactive ox oxygen substance, then that may be kill the uh, cancer cell. Then next one is the photothermal. So death. Then uh, genes theranostic, uh, we can use some, you know, um, small interfering RNAs or uh, miRNAs through to diagnostic and cure the cancer cell. That is a G gene theranostic. Then next one is the cocktail. Cocktail maybe we, we can use the uh, many, many techniques uh, to to, to kill the cancer cells. So now we can broadly classify the new strategies into six different types. One is a chemotheranostic, radiotheranostic, photodynamic, photothermal, gene theranostic, and cocktail. Okay, we are going to have a detailed discussion on the each uh, theranostic. So before uh, going to discuss on elaborate manner, firstly we will have the key advance advance in the cancer nano theranostic. So it's actually the data from 1995 to 2016. So this is the first phase study. The the first drug which approved by FDA is a um, doxorubicin for a uh, 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 cancer treatment. Uh, pharmacy student, you know, right? We have a different phase of studies. So the first phase initiated in 1999. Then another few milestones also they re reach uh, PLGA, that means polyethylene glycolated liposome tested in human patient in 2000. Then 2005, the another drug approved by the FDA, a Brax uh, uh, Then they have. Uh, SIRNA, that means small interfering RNA clinical trial to target the delivering nanoparticle to the cancer cell line. Then the first human trial was initiated in 2009. Then uh, 
first in human imaging of albumin complexing GA labeled uh, truncated EB. That means the imaging sensation in 2015. Then they have a phase three trial in 2016. Nowadays, now you know the robots, nano robots, are came into the market. Uh, you know, uh, to diagnosis, and we are in the advanced stage now uh, to uh, diagnosis and treat the uh, cancers. The first uh, nano diagnostic is assist with the chemotherapy. As you know, right? The chemotherapy may meaning. Uh, if any drug of the cancer cell reproducing, which uh, prevent them for growing or spreading in the body, that is a main uh, you know uh, concept for a chemotherapy to kill the cancer cell, to preventing the or they stop the cancer cells or reproducing, which prevent them in the growing or uh, spreading in the body. So it reduces the risk of off-target by imaging guided delivery of chemotherapeutic agents or chemotherapeutic drugs. It's actually considered as timely, accurate, and non-invasive detection. So no need to do any kind of minor operation or thingy like that. So we can use a non-invasive detection of a yearly response of a chemotherapies. So most commonly used nanocarriers for this, uh, you know, uh, chemotherapies are uh, liposomes. Hyaluronic acid, folic acid, they are all considered as some uh, hyaluronic acid and folic acid as a hydrophilic in nature. So they are more prone to attach with the uh, cancer cells. The example one, uh, the work which was performed by using the chemotherapy is a fluorescence imaging guided combined with chemotherapy of photodynamic therapy. The author or the person who invented is Go et al. Uh, in 2016 uh, with the fluorescence imaging guided combined chemotherapy. Ethylene glycohol succinate, TPGS, we can call it as TPGS. This is um, a kinetic unhydrated modified doxorubicin is a drug to obtain anti-tumor pro drug. Eh? So in this, they can load the photosensitizer that is called as a uh, chlorine 6 into the pro drug. So we have already drug. So we are loading the photosensitizer uh, that is chlorine 6 into the pro drug. So enhance the release of taxirobosine and C, uh, that means chlorine 6 via the hydrolysis of acid sensitive amide link under pH 5.5. We have a uh, some uh, you know um, acid sensitive amide linker along with the pro drug and photosensitizer. So they will uh, they did the in vivo studies using the animal model. So they are having the A459 tumor bearing mice treated with the drug. Uh, that means the pro drug loaded with the photosensitizer and along with infrared radiation. So the infrared radiation also is used to here to enhance them, uh, you know, uh, delivery and we are using the UV also, right? So that is the visible region. What is the near infrared region? It's around 1,100 to 2,500 is considered as a near infrared region. So irradiation have significantly enhances the therapeutic application uh, efficiency as compared to the free doxirubicin or free uh, chlorine six. So if you give it individually, we cannot get much effect. So we will give it along with the uh, photosensitizer with the uh, acidic sensitive amide linker. Then maybe we can get the better, uh, you know, um, treatment. So look at that picture. This is also the same like what we discussed in the general mechanism. Uh, if you look at this area, we have a pH sensitizer and drug with the photosensitizer. Uh, so in a uh, nano form. Okay. So once it's injected to the animal, then that maybe reaches the uh, you know the tumor cell and it 
the tumor cell will get destroyed because of the drug and other how the drug will act on the uh, cancer cells. So this is a fluorescence imaging guided combined hemotherapy and photodynamic therapy. The second example, uh, this is actually is a Cheng et al. did with the uh, matrix metalloproteinase direct uh, precious targeting. This is uh, considered as a small uh, drug delivery of a biodegradable gold nanodendillions. Uh, so gold nanoparticles they used to uh, make as a chemotherapy renostic. The same concept, uh, they have a target imaging and drug delivery. The drug used here is a taxirupacin uh, again, uh, with a targeted imaging and delivery. Uh, they have high dose loading efficacy and controlled release because uh, they have a gold nanoparticle, so we can have a controlled drug release. Maybe you can look at the picture here. It's having uh, tumor multi environmental responsive. Uh, that is a matrix metallopropylase enzyme drug dolce and you know uh, it's like a yeah, drug loaded uh, protein taxirubacin and the gold debris. So this is the way how they are uh, synthesized the gold nanoparticle uh, loaded with the matrix metalloproteinase. The same uh, as we discussed in the general mechanism, once you inject it through the bloodstream, then it reaches either by passive or active transport or active targeting. So it reaches the cancer cells and it kills the cancer cell by endocytosis mechanism. The next one is a radiotherapy. Uh, what is meant by radiotherapy? It's a treatment used in the high dose of radiation to kill the cancer cells. Uh, not only to kill the cancer cell, and also the cancer cell will get shrink when we apply it as a radiation onto the damaged cell. So here the polyvinyl pyrrolidine and uh, selenocysteine modified bismuth selenide nanoparticles. Uh, so maybe the nanoparticle they made with the uh, bismuth uh, selenide. Selen so they can check uh, this, uh, you know, uh, efficacy against the BEL7402 cell. Uh, that is a multi drug resistant cell line. Actually, this is a cell line. Uh, this is uh, used to check whether the drug have a uh, resist, uh, resistant to treat the cancer cell. So uh, they have uh, different, uh, three different varieties of, you know, in the, uh, they check with the plain uh, nanoparticles, nanoparticles with the near infrared radiation and they have uh, nanoparticles with both x-ray and uh, nir radiation so this is they are checking the viability of the cell if you look at the third one uh, it's having only 15 percentage of drugs is uh, you know living so remaining 85 percentage got destroyed because of through the radiography treatment so you see here they differentiate with the different color. So we have uh, uh, near infrared radiation, irradiation, then X-ray, and also our drug injected through the, uh, you know, uh, the added advantages of this one, the radiotherapy assist with the selenium uh, selenide it it won't affect you know uh, the normal tissues okay so it promote uh, promote the radio production in the normal tissue normally 
the main disadvantages with the radiotherapy, you know, what is that uh, main drawback of radiotherapy? Mucocytosis, right? Even though if the cancer patient, they are undergone for the radiotherapy, they can feel the feel or they can get that mucocytosis. Not only the patient, those who are, you know, the technician who are involving in the radiotherapy also will affect it. So in this case, they can have the selenocysteine modified bismuth selenite nanoparticle. It may promote the radio production in the normal tissue. So this is a added advantages. It can only, you know, target to the affected cells. Then it kills the uh, tumor tissues. It won't affect the normal cells. Uh, tungsten doped titanium oxide nanoparticles with a strong absorption in the near infrared region to window for the photoacoustic CD dual model imaging and synergistic ther uh, thermodyne thermoradiotherapy of a tumor by Go et al. The author uh, who invented this technique is Go et al. in 2019. So the same concept, but which we seen in the previous. Uh, slide. So radiotherapy alone, then PTT alone, then combination of both. So the cell viability is 21 percentage, meaning that the remaining 79 percentage of cell was destroyed because of the combination therapy. Okay, nanoparticle, NIR, near infrared radiation, and X-ray. All together, you look at that color, green color. So it's almost you know uh, the cell death is. Uh, 79 80 percentage so after that because it's also biodegradable but it will take time so uh, it take another 30 days period to remove from our body the I hope you understand that huh? uh, from the video how uh, normally the radiotherapy, how the cell get die due to the radiation. So the another one technique is a photodynamic technique. This is uh, this actually is a unique mechanism. Uh, you can see uh, the kill the cancer cells through the reactive oxygen species uh, generated by the photosensitizer agent upon radiation. What is the role of, uh, you know, ROS here? Uh, this actually, if we have, if the ROS is there in the cell, it can inhibit the cancer cell growth by suppressing the synthesis of ATP and nucleotide. It's leading to 
you know, cell cycle arrest and blocking the cancer cell proliferation. That is the main role of ROS if it's there in the cell. But normally, uh, we don't have any ROS in the cancer cell, so we need to induce or we. growth by sub, uh, suppressing the synthesis of ATP or nucleotide. We have uh, look at this picture. The first one says that the person with the cancer receive the drug called as a photosensitizer. So after uh, in 24 to 72 hours, the cancer cell absorb the photosensitizer. For example, if the person having the cancer here in the organ, then it get absorbed after uh, 24 to 78 hours after the administration of the photosensitizer. Then the third step, the cancer cell that absorb the photosensitizer are exposed to the light. Okay, when it our body exposed to the light, then it get absorbed the photosensitizer. Then the light causes the photosensitizer to make a form of oxygen that kills the cancer cell. Yes, now I told you if you have oxygen there in the cells that can be converted into oxygen because it's a dead cell, right? So we don't have any oxygen. If the light causes the photosensitizer to make a form of oxygen that kills the cancer cells, the oxygen will convert it to ROS, uh, uh, reactive oxygen species. Uh, so, so in this mechanism, is exploit the optical characteristics of photosensitizer for simultaneous imaging. Uh, imaging. So we can take, uh, you know, image uh, image also. That means we can diagnose the uh, cancer as well where it is located. It can be classified into two categories. Uh, it's depending on the irradiation sources, maybe the direct irradiation or through the energy transfer. Now it's considered as this is a energy transfer, right? So the photosensitizer with converted to oxygen. The example of this uh, photodynamic thermostic, uh, some limitation with the photo, uh, photodynamic thermostic is insufficient tissue penetration of our light. Normally, Uh, so in, in, insufficient tissue penetration on the light, hence the less effective for the deep tissue tumors. So we cannot say that it's, it get immediately triggered by the light because our organ is inside the body, so it's in depth. So we cannot uh, say that it immediately get activate. So alternatively, use of resonance of chemiluminous and Bioluminescence, huh? chemiluminescence, and bioluminescence. These are all the two uh, resources we can use it for a uh, irradiation sources huh? uh, along with the normal photosensitizer. So they have a biodegradable polymer nanoparticles for a photodynamic therapy by the bioluminescence resource energy transfer. Uh, the author worked is uh, N et al. in um, 2018. They prepared the uh, PLGA, uh, polyelectric or glycolic acid uh, nanoparticles loaded with the photosensitizer and conjugate with uh, costly luciferase as a uh, with the uh, luciferase light sources. So you look at the picture here, it's having all drug, uh, luciferase, nanoparticles, and the photosensitizer rose bengal uh, in a one nanomolecules. Here, that may be, uh, that is called as a bread, that is resonance energy, BL resonance energy transfer. So this energy transfer here, then the oxygen available will be converted to ROS, then the ROS will induce the cell death. This is the mechanism behind that. It's effectively kill the tumor cells and inhibit the 
tumor growth. I hope you understand the mechanism, how the energy transfer. Okay, so this is a uh, bioluminous resonance energy transfer. So it's energy conversion from oxygen to ROS, then it causes the cell death. The next one is a photothermal, you know, uh, photo means is light, right? So it's light with heat. So photothermal thermostat. Uh, it transforming of light into heat, then hypo uh, hyperthermic micro environment. It cause the thermal ablation on the cancer cell, and it produce a um, apoptosis. Apoptosis. Apoptosis is considered as a cell death here. So the nanoparticle may function solely as a drug carrier or as a both carrier and the phytothermal agent. So here the and nanoparticle will act as a drug carrier and also the phytothermal agent. As a drug carrier, we can use the liposome as a carrier for a code delivery of the phosphorus reduced peroxide and to to uh, acinobis ethyl benzothiazoline 6 sulfonic acid uh, ABTS. In the presence of hydrogen peroxide, the ABTS is converted to HRP. So meaning that this is considered as a reduction process. So in this case, uh, it form uh, with a strong infrared uh, absorption. Then it form a uh, photoacoustic imaging and PTT. So able to. So you see here, uh, this is actually is a reduction process, hydrogen peroxide to water, then HRP, conversion of our HRP. So it can be detect the inflammation, then in vivo uh, PA of a brain, will I must consider, uh, consider difficult due to the blood brain barrier and the location of the brain tumor. So it's differentiate the metastatic and the Non metastatic lymph node. So, this is mainly for a, a detection of a inflammation. So, when the inflammation will happen, if it the tissue or the cell get damaged, then the inflammation was occur on the place. So, that can be easily detected by the photothermal theranostic. The another example. for the both drug carrier and the phytothermal agents. So usually the inorganic nanomaterials is used as a uh, agent. Uh, that means the drug carrier here to treat the cancer. The black uh, phosphorus has been shown to be an ideal candidate due to, uh, due to the EC access by the conversion efficient biocompatible and high, high carrier mobility so that's why we choose an as a black uh, phosphorus as an uh, ideal uh, candidate to do the uh, phytothermal theranostic firstly they develop uh, the first example uh, chen et al in 2017 they developed a 2d block phosphorus nano sheet with the taxirubacin delivery of a think that uh, they have all three kind of uh, you know mechanism photodynamic photothermal and chemotherapy here uh, they can uh, load the drug efficacy by 950% so imagine that Normally, if it is increased, double the quantity also is a lot of barrier is that to increase the drug loading capacity. But uh, through this uh, photothermal uh, theranostic,
product release. So due to this mechanism, pH and photo responsive drug release and promotion of drug release by the photothermal effect on a uh, BP. If you assume that normally, uh, if you give it as a dosage form, the very few percentage of drug only reaches the target site. So you see the diagram here. This is actually is a uh, 2D black phosphorus nano sheet with a drug loaded. It's having photodynamic, photothermal, and hemo chemotherapy activity. So once once it's enter into the intracellular, uh, you know, uh, inside the cell. Then it enters through endocytosis into the affected cell. Then it acts as a chemotherapy. And also, we can have, uh, you know, uh, the inside the cell, it's having the pH range of 5.5. And also, this area should have a high temperature, especially in the higher temperature as compared to the normal cell temperature. So due to this heat, the drug will starts to release into the affected area. Then the next example is a polydopamine nanoparticles or PTT agents and nanocarrier for the chemotherapeutic drug by the DONG. He was discovered in 2016 and published uh, his work. And the manganese ion modified with polyethylene glycol. This is the nanoparticle they prepared by the manganese ion. It's a metallic nanoparticles. So we can call it as uh, PDA, ICG. Uh, polyethylene glycol and doxyrubosine doxing enable imaging guided chemo and phototermal cancer therapy. It's demonstrated the improved uh, phototermal conversion efficiency. Photo okay. Magnetic resonance imaging with the uh, magnesium uh, ion, manganese ion. This is actually is an imaging agent. Uh, they can take uh, the you know values or readings of every five minutes. Then uh, they can identify whether the drug is reached onto the target. So it's showing that uh, it's having 0.5 volt uh, centimeter square for the drug release pattern how much amount of drug can be released. They may be calculated against the uh, percentage versus time. So they have proven already the phototermal theranostic uh, will you know, deliver the high amount of drug onto the target area. Be released onto the target site or so next video uh, actually this is also uh, is related to the photothermal diagnostic maybe you can watch then you can understand better uh, how the photothermal diagnostic is
I think uh, you can understand uh, how the photothermal diagnostic happened and also what is the future plan maybe we can have the the last one we saw in the video is our nano robots or nano boards we can call it as so in future maybe uh, all the diagnostic and treat maybe uh, in future we can have a good clinical application for the cancer treatment through the nanobots. So the next one is, uh, is so nanothermostic assist gene therapy. So it's widely acknowledged that the gene expression is related to the cancer. Uh, so RNAs types of uh, uh, gene therapies are uh, theranostic. We can call it as uh, small interfering RNAs, um, MI RNAs, SH RNAs based, so, so short hair pin RNA that is called as SH RNA, MI RNA. So is there uh, in the Here, small interfering RNA therapy, for example, anti EGF receptor. October is a kind of uh, protein, is guided the code delivery of anti cancer, um, small interfering RNAs, and the quantum dots for the theranostic and the triple negative breast cancer by Chemetal. He did his work in 2019. for a cancer treatment. As I said, uh, this uh, small interfering RNA uh, is actually uh, it's used to, to target the uh, cancer cells. So from the cationic lipid nanoparticle, they included the SIR. They may be prepared as a multifunctional nanoparticles. That nanoparticles may be injected to the animal, to the organ. Then uh, it will reach us to the target tumor. So if you remember those two mechanisms, either by active targeting or passive targeting, so the same way normally the drug will get The functional, uh, the surface functional is the each nanoparticle surface function is different. But the targeting is remains same either by active or passive targeting. Uh, but the functional nature, that means the surface function of a nanoparticles may be different. So the miRNA therapy also they use for a uh, regards on the idea to target the uh, brain tumors. So normally the another drawback with the brain tumor, so most of the drugs cannot be reach due to due to their you know physiochemical properties or so in this case uh, we can use uh, like uh, mrna so uh, in this uh, mrna therapy they have a uh, dual fluorescent conjugates uh, quantum dots hyaluronic acid polyethylene uh, kind of polymers to deliver the drug into the liver cancer and hyaluronic acid polyethylene amide and near infrared fluorescence quantum dots for a 
brand delivery. So it's uh, interwinding DNA, RNA, DNA capsules that deliver the DNA. Antigen presenting cells in the limb node of a cancer immunotherapy. So these are all the way how the drug can be delivered into the target sites. So look at the picture. Uh, we have both uh, you know uh, imaging uh, that means for diagnosis and also we can track whether the drug has been reached to the affected area then the lost uh, single ango therapy so we are using a single therapy for uh, uh, you know to treat the oncology patient uh, combination field in the cancer therapies is gaining increased attention in the basic and clinical studies so the administration of multimodal diagnosis and treatment strategy is named as a cocktail so it's having a, a different uh, model cocktail diagnosis is chemotherapy drug with a nucleic acid chemotherapy drug with the hyperthermic uh, mechanism. So we have uh, different uh, diagnostic or multi-model diagnostic and treatment we can see here. It's under the cocktail, then the phototherapy involved cocktail thermosis. Uh, maybe we can have. Kinase this a kind of. Uh, uh, you know, in symbol or small interfering RNA. Imaging guider combined with PT2 and uh, gene therapy. So in brief, we can see uh, these are all the different nanoparticles, uh, some of the possible cocktail strategies they mentioned here. So in brief, we can say that we have lipid and liposomes uh, they may be used for a <coughs> therapy purpose like uh, chemotherapeutic drugs nucleic acids peptides antibodies gene therapy immunotherapy or radiotherapy so we have a different uh, therapies through the nanoparticles as well as we have a imaging diagnosis like you know <coughs> pet is like a, a Then uh, compute, uh, computer tomography, MRI, magnetic resonance image, and photo uh, acoustic and fluorescence. These are all considered as a imaging and diagnostic uh, diagnosing tools. So, what is our ultimate uh, aim here? Is we can treat the cancer cell without distance. So some of the nanoparticles uh, incorporated into the imaging agent, for example, we have uh, potmium, chromium. Then uh, we have the some optical imaging like uh, CS, CY5, this is imaging agent. Then we have a US imaging, MAS, uh, you know, MRI imaging with the different uh, IR. Then use iodine. So these are all the uh, incorporated into the image. Answer cell. So each uh, kind of imaging, they have their own advantages and the disadvantages. Uh, I'm not going to read those things. Maybe uh, each uh, 
technique should have uh, advantages and disadvantages as well. Nanoparticle, still we are facing the issues. So it's underestimation of our tumor heterogeneity. Uh, this is a main issue still we are facing uh, because it depends on the uh, oversimplified pharmacokinetic model where the tumor is seen as a leaky sponge. As I said, this is normally the uh, cancer cells or tissues is a disorganized way. So it's very difficult to identify. So the model downplay impact on the variation in a micro vessel density and vessel. of nanoparticles because it's uh, you know it behaves in a different manner uh, with a different studies for example in vitro it will behave differently in vivo it different it's behave different differently that's why we cannot come up with a scale up study for a nanoparticle still we are facing the issues to scale up the nanoparticles from the lab scale to the large production because of its you know uh, uh, it's a lack of information and uh, you know uh, it's not uh, uniformly behaving in India. Also, uh, the therapeutic efficacy with the uh, systemic toxicity. It depends on the drug and device which we can going to use and also the patient. We can choose the nanoparticles. It depends on the drug and device and the patient and physician and what kind of you know choice of therapy for the particular patient and precautionary principles and unknown effect of of a development of a new um, nanoparticles for our clinical trials. So funding and supply chain. So also you have made drawbacks. So these are all the reference uh, I referred uh, for this presentation. Uh, so thank you for your uh, attention. Uh, so you may contact me through this email ID which I mentioned here. Uh, is there any question to pre-field to ask? Do you have any question? Thank you so much, sir, for such an enlightening and informative session. So now the participants can unmute if you have any queries, or you can just drop your question in the chat box. Good evening, Dr. Ashok. Good evening. Hello. Uh, this is, can you hear me? This is Dr. Shabhi. Um, uh, yeah, I can. Particularly in cancer of diagnostic. I appreciate you for taking time to address our students group. And uh, you have very clearly explained the prevalence, current cancer therapies, overview, multifunctional nanoparticles, strategy of uh, nanoparticles, uh, nanothermostics, advance offered by the nanoparticle in cancer thermostics, uh, challenges, implications, and examples. It was very clear. And uh, new proposed strategy also, I am quite impressed about the chemo thermostic radio thermostic
pressure delivery, then I know Thermostic is a powerful, unique and uh, multifunctional tool that may be the yields of uh, positive impact, both uh, basic research and clinical application of cancer. We predict that uh, in near future, nano thermostic platform will be continue to grow the progressively uh, implicated in the development of novel and efficacious diagnosis. Your presentation was very quite uh, quite uh, pertinent uh, given that our research scholar is about to undergo a, a new era of explanation. And I think that We aim to your, use your ideas and in upcoming campus, uh, campaign as well. Uh, once more, thank you, Dr. Ashok, for your contribution. And I have uh, two questions to you, actually. Uh, so nowadays, oncologists, you know, um, looking for uh, the blood and bone marrow stem uh, cell transplantation, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, interventional radiotherapy, radiation therapy, there which one is better for this uh, topic actually thank you dr safi uh, for your uh, in appreciation uh, and also i also uh, you know uh, very uh, grateful uh, to be a speaker of today's uh, webinar session um, when I go to this, you know, uh, area to know about further, then maybe I also learned a lot of. Uh, research we can, you know, enhance or possible research, we can do it on this area. I also learned a lot of things uh, when I collect the literature about this topic. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sabi. And uh, your question is, uh, which one is, uh, having high uh, targeting effect right from passive or active yeah, yeah. so based on my literature and also some limitation with the passive uh, targeting because uh, the passive targeting is not a uh, site specific target is you know the surrounding tissues nature and also the uh, cancer tissues uh, uh, disorientation. Uh, it's not based on the uh, specific attraction. If you ask me which one is a better, I can say the active trans, active targeting. That means the drug and its multifunctional characteristics of the nanoparticles will go and attach to the uh, cancer cell to. targeting is more uh, in, uh, prominent and also a more useful way of targeting as compared to the passive. I hope I answer, uh, I answered for your question. Exactly, Doctor. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and one more question is there. What are the major advantage of uh, nanothermostic is better than other, uh, I mean, therapy related to cancer? that now the nano theranostic, the new word come up with the nanoparticles. Theranostic, we can say that this is for only diagnosis and treatment. Even if you give it in the treat uh, for some radiation, so radiation is considered as uh, for a treatment. We can give some imaging agent along with radiation. Maybe we, they can find the uh, area of uh, the you know uh, affected cells. So that is considered as uh, diagnosis and treatment. But the nano materials for a diagnostic. That means the target detection, drug distribution, and therapeutic response in an one uh, single nano unit. So the nano is a uh, more uh, you know, uh, prominent. Uh, we can call it as uh, is for a specially for the 
cancer treatment. So our ultimate aim is not only to treat the cancer, we need to diagnose, diagnose those cancer in a early stage. Then only we can treat in a diagnosis early as well as we can treat in a proper way. Thank you, Dr. Ashok. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Any other any other questions? Yes, sir. This is Dr. Andrew. Good evening, Dr. Ashok. Good evening, sir. Uh, How are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very fine. So after listening to your talk, I understand that uh, the next nanotechnology setting will be the milestone in research. Yes. methods recommended for nanotherinostics yes sir actually for we need to check with the cytotoxicity cell cytotoxicity and also i i uh, i i read some articles in that if the particle size is below 20 nanometer range it's not suitable for a treatment because it can be removed through our kidney so uh, this is like a excretion pathway. It can be removed through our kidney and other uh, organs. Uh, 20 nanometer until 100, it will be reach the better treatment and diagnosis. And also the circulation in the blood will be higher. That means the timing normally the particles will be, uh, you know, the normal nanoparticles will be removed from our blood circulation within three to five minutes. Even if it is in the case of like the multifunctional nanoparticles that may be, you know, stay for a longer time in our bloodstream. So it may produce a sustained rate. So is there any, so you were explaining about the advantages of uh, nanotheranostics, right? Yes, yes. Sir. So here, it, is there any uh, changes related to shelf life of uh, nanotheranostics compared to other normal nanoparticles? Um, so the shelf life is, uh, because this kind of multifunctional nanoparticles also is, uh, you know, is easily can, uh, uh, mingle with our biological fluid it won't make any uh, toxicity prepared nanoparticle in the room temperature uh, then uh, the self life of the particle is a question mark so we need to maintain some specific storage temperature uh, storage temperature after the preparation so uh, the stability wise Yes, compared to the normal and the multifunctional, then we need to uh, have a specific storage condition. For example, nowadays, uh, the, during the pandemic time, some of the countries came up with the vaccine that should be minus 70 degree or minus 40 degrees. So we need a specific storage condition. The same things will go for. Yeah, tube which we are using for them. Uh, multifunctional nanoparticles. So we need to uh, have a specific storage conditions. Or if you use some special kind of bioactives, then we should have a specific storage condition for that. Okay, sir. One more last question. Yes, sir. Um, actually, in the, at the end of the session, uh, you explained about the drug del uh, delivery techniques to the target tissues. Yes. And also, you mentioned. Is, is it possible to entrap uh, a combination of uh, uh, active radio protectives with the chemotherapeutic agents in the nano theranostics? So you mean that mean that uh, you are uh, wanted to include any antitude uh, along with the radio uh, molecules, right, sir? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. This is also uh, you know the good idea. Maybe we can incorporate, but. Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, yes, yes, yes. In the similar manner, is there any chance to entrap chemotherapeutic agent and along with radioprotectives? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nowadays, the melanin caffeine combinations are they are using for uh, you know uh, to prevent the mucositis so, because this is the main drawback of uh, radiation therapy. Uh, maybe we can include also because uh, we are already we submitted one proposal to our uh, Malaysian. Plan to have a melanin and a caffeine combination to prevent the mucositis. Maybe this idea, your idea is also a good things. Maybe we can incorporate along with the you know antitoad or the mucosite uh, mucositis preventing agent uh, into our nanoparticle itself. Uh, this also a good idea, sir. Maybe we can try also. If uh, if nobody will did. Uh, nobody did this uh, kind of uh, work. Maybe we can incorporate melanin or caffeine along with this. Uh, the antitoad loaded uh, multifunction nanoparticles against the cancer cell. Thank you. Thank you for your explanation, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, sir there is one question in the chat box. Yeah. Yes. Sir. How is amount of imaging component decided to be incorporated in nanoparticle? Is it through the similar way API dose is determined, that is by cell line study or some other method? Yeah, the role of nanotechnostics because in Therapy name. There are no. Oh, someone is at the interacting. Can you please uh, mute? Yes, yes. Uh, sir, actually, um, taken care. Uh, you can continue. Yeah. Uh, for for imaging agents or. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the main drawback with the current nanoparticle system. Uh, is the dose actually if you go with the in vitro, it's behaving, behaving like a different manner. The same molecule if you go with the in vivo with the animal model. The behavior is totally different. So the dose also uh, is you know it's not similar as we are using in the in vitro. So we need to adjust the dose according to the need. Suppose if you use the animal model, the dose may be higher than as we use for a in vitro. Uh, or if any imaging agents. Uh, the dose will be different if you go with the in vitro and in vivo. Not a similar dose, but we need to fix the dose which is more, you know, uh, efficient or if it is more, uh, you know, uh, more action. Uh, so it depends on the efficacy, clinical efficacy or clinical application. Challenges. Oh, what are the challenges of nanothermostics in cancer management? So mainly the therapeutic efficacy and systemic toxicity, because we cannot predict the exact therapeutic efficacy uh, for the uh, nano, uh, you know, uh, nano uh, thermostic. Different nanotheranostic. It's not in a similar way. The the manners how it's you know behave. The pharmacokinetic pattern is uh, pharmacokinetic model is totally different than uh, uh, other nanoparticles. Meaning that if you prepared with the uh, metallic nanoparticles with metallic multifunction nanoparticles with um, other carbon dots or carbon uh, nanoparticles, the Pharmacokinetic model test of patient. 
and also if you go just now also I told uh, during my the previous question uh, the in vitro and in vivo is not behaving uh, similarly that is also considered as a challenge uh, and also we cannot go with uh, simply go with uh, uh, that means the lab scale uh, bench scale to the large scale this is a uh, Thank you, I sir. Hope, uh, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, so one more question is there. Uh, it's what is the imagine tech in I think uh, imaging technique uh -huh. in building functional nanoparticles. Uh, so we have uh, Uh, syndograph syndigraphy is a advanced technique we are using for a imaging uh, that means the image uh, the molecules whether it reaches the target site or not so syndigraphy is a imaging tool or techniques to identify the, the molecules whether it reaches the target site or not I hope I answer for your question. Post it in the chat box. So we have got one question. Which okay. nanoparticle? Which nanoparticle has the major application for the treatment of cancer? Uh, nowadays, uh, we are uh, from the literature. I saw that uh, magnetic metallic nanoparticles having the higher application. Uh, it's all in the publication aspect. I, I'm I'm talking about. Metallic nanoparticles showing the higher efficacy. Because it may produce a localized action uh, and also the amount of drug released from the nanoparticle is high. Farmer? So can we put the recording of the session on YouTube? Yeah, it's no problem. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So thank you, everyone. Now I would like to call upon Mr. Achut to present the vote of thanks. Yeah, good evening, one and all. Myself, Achut, m -Farm student and member of Pan Pharmacon Club from Department of Pharmacon. To the management, Honorable Vice Chancellor Dr. Kuldeep Braina and Pro Vice Chancellor Dr. Karbanda for their continuous encouragement and support in conducting the webinars. On behalf of all the faculty members of Department of Pharmacology, I thank our Dean Professor Dr. S. Bharat sir for his valuable guidance, and I would also like to thank our HOD sir Dr. J. Anbu for his motivation and guidance. We are really fortunate to have. SI University, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. In spite of his busy schedule, he agreed to share his knowledge in this webinar. Really, we enjoyed and gained a lot of scientific knowledge, sir. We are very much thankful for accepting our invitation and taking part in this event. I would like to convey my sincere appreciation to our faculty coordinators of today's event, Dr. M.D. Shabi, sir, and Dr. Damodar Naik, sir, department faculty members, as Faculty of Pharmacy, I profusely thank all the participants for their active participation and support. Thank you all.